Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the last for Nana of the Dawn, sorry, to the last exhibition match for tonight. I remain your host, Chad of Fury CC3, presenting a match between Flipstep and Sprung on La Isla Bonita. And I'm very glad to see this map again, because I like this map. Curious what the player's gonna do, and for the sake of everyone, make sure the water is nice and transparent, because frankly, I don't know how much the water's gonna be used. I expect it'll be a fair amount. So make sure it's nice and transparent in case stuff gets used. Jump bot for flipstep and gunship for sprung. So at the moment, it looks like it actually won't be, but well, other than the buggy shadows, you can see the stuff underwater, which should be handy. That comes up all the time. Well, water four. Okay, even with water four on this map is not terrible. I actually prefer the way the bump water looks. It's just that if stuff gets built underwater, it starts to look actually. Also, why is endless ocean not working? This is another weird thing. Endless Ocean should be happening here. <laughs> but yeah. It kind of depends on the map. This map might be okay. Actually, that's true. This map's probably okay. Add in Sony, it tends to be a bit more of a problem. Endless Ocean is a map setting. Google probably pointing out that Endless Ocean is a map setting inside the map. That should never be a map setting. Every like, There's no reason to not have Endless Ocean. It just looks terrible if it ends at the end of the map. It should go on forever. That way it looks more smooth. It doesn't have this harsh edge. Anyway. Water settings aside. Flips to going quickly for the Pyros. Sprung went quickly for the Blaster for the Nats, which... Didn't really seem to do much. Okay, Nat and Banshee. Okay, there we go. That's because it hasn't actually gone and done anything yet. Doesn't seem to have done much because it hasn't. Alright, that seems reasonable. And the first victim will not be that pyro, because that pyro, although it will know about it. Flipstep knows something's coming. And that gnat being very unlucky. The banshees, on the other hand, also probably being fairly unlucky. Jumping pyro trying to get them and doing a pretty decent job, but still dying in the process. And banshees splitting fire between them. Oh, one of them going down. All right, that's not working out too well. Not the ideal situation at all. Pyro's going for a counterattack, getting Sprung's commander, going to the base, trying to take that out too, but we saw before, one Pyro will lose to two Banshees. As it does. And Sprung regenerating the health pretty quickly, so they should not be in too much danger overall. Or is that plus five or five seconds? No, that's plus five. They're good. They are set. So Flipstep right now is... Pretty well set up, honestly. And their economy starting out very strong. Sprung at 14 metal per second. Not really getting a very strong opener, whereas Flipstep at 21 without reclaim. So Flipstep already one and a half times the economy really pushing that expansion hard. I mean, they can kind of get away with it too. The thing you want to do when you're dealing with air, get a lot of unit, get a lot of expansion. Just don't worry about it. Yeah, some of it will die, but you're going to have a massive economic advantage. And if you get away with it, that's even better. But if you don't, if you're not living the dream, hey, at least... You've expanded so much that your opponent can't do much to deal with it. So that works. And Flipstep's doing... Sorry, doing exactly that. Getting into the water, though, and that's not working quite as well as they'd like, but it's still working out okay. I mean, it's... No, they lose that, but they still have fairly strong expansion over here. Although, why are they not expanding down to this alcove? I don't know. I guess it's because it's between the two. Okay, Google Frog asking about how that makes sense. It makes sense because air can raid against unsupported expansions, but there's only so many units and they're probably going to be grouped up. You're probably not going to have all the units going around split up separately across the map, which means that if you have a bunch of expansions, yeah, some of them will die, but there's only one of them at a time going to get air raided and the remaining ones can just get, they can get defended up if they need to and then it ends up still with a stronger economy. It's a bit weird and counterintuitive. It works better against air or against planes than gunships. But anyway, Flipstep does have a fairly strong economy regardless, and Sprung also with a fairly strong economy. Getting that crane that I mentioned in the first game is a really good... I, I still think it's a really good constructor. So yeah, definitely the expansion against planes makes a lot of sense. Against gunships, I guess it's debatable, but against planes, that's typically the way to go. Like, against bombers and such, there are only so many ravens, they can only take out one metal extractor at a time. 
Against Banshees, it's a bit different because they do have more sustained damage. But even then, like, if they split up, sure, but I don't know. At any rate, Flipstep with the Air Factory, with the planes, they are going to be building up some counters, so that won't be a problem for long. And actually, they might be able to go back and hit Sprung, and Sprung is not expanding a lot, though they have gone for a light vehicle switch. So against, against Jump Bots, I would expect probably to see Slashers. Especially with the amount of Pyros being built, and especially with the air being built as well, Slashers and possibly Crashers on top of that for dedicated anti-air. But yeah, Slashers definitely. Those I can totally see happening. And the Swift, what the heck's going getting stuck there? That is not what I wanted to do. That Banshee should be... How is that Banshee not dead? Okay, now it's dead, but still, how did it not die? At any rate, Sprung is going to be going for Ravager Leveler, not, in fact, going for Slashers. They want to go for Direct Assault. And a few Levelers to deal with the Jump Bots, but for the most part, yeah, direct. I mean, the Ravagers work okay, but the Levelers to deal with the Pyros, not going for Slashers. Interesting choice. They want to be on the offensive, and admittedly, they have been thus far, which makes sense. They would continue with that particular tactic. And also getting Rapiers on top of that. Bit of a better option against the Swifts, but still kind of risky. Touch surprised we don't see any Tridents coming up. Just a little bit. Not that surprised. I'm actually a little surprised we aren't seeing Crashers coming up, but not also that surprised. What I am kind of surprised at is the lack of Hawks coming up to deal with the Rapiers. Or really anything to deal with the Rapiers. Man, at this point, Sprung can just build Rapiers completely unopposed. As they are also assaulting relatively unopposed, Flipstep's commander not really in a good position. I mean, the Pyro's coming in to help out, but there's not much here. Leveler Ravager coming in to help deal with... Actually, the Levelers and Ravagers getting distracted by the Pyro's, which does help the commander a bit. Actually, quite a bit. All the un Sprung's units completely out of position from each other broke formation to their detriment, forcing the commander back, mind you. But now the Pyro's going to have a nice numerical advantage. And that local numerical advantage here was over in this little Ravager fight. Totally unnecessary, but I think Flipstep's commander's going down. Yes, it is. Flipstep's still losing the commander, but their economy is probably strong enough to deal with this, and they can get the workers. I mean, they have plenty of Freakers. Five Freakers so far. And now that the air is more or less dealt with, Flipstep's now expanding like mad. Got the north side, reclaiming that up. Nice and nicely done. Like to see that. More Freakers going along, just expanding along this little alcove, because why not? I mean, really, these, they're just set up everywhere. And Pyro Counterattack coming in now that basically everything is open. And, ooh, nice positioning. Although, unfortunately, that Pyro jumping in when it really should not have. Stardust still down, but that Pyro could have killed the Stardust from the low, de from the low ground without risking its life like that. Not sure why Flipstep is insisting on jumping all the time with those Pyros, jumping into combat rather than out of combat. Out of combat probably wouldn't help too much, but still. Why are you jumping into combat like that? You were at the the ground is working for you. Regardless, Flipstep clearly not really worrying too much about the direct fight. They're worried more about making sure they have the economy, getting safe expansions up, getting the reclaim going, keeping air control so that they can maintain those expansions in the face of rapiers. And I mean, admittedly, don't really agree with the hawks against the rapiers. I mean, the hawks are cheaper. I think the hawks are half the cost. Yeah, hawks are exactly half the cost actually. But the Rapiers are still doing a fine job, and they are... The Rapiers are good anti-ground. Okay, there we go. Sorry, not Hawks. Hawks are a good idea. I should say Swifts. Swifts are not the best idea. Hawks are a good idea. Hawks are what they should be going to get rid of the Rapiers. And they did. And the Swifts doing an okay job with the anti-ground, but still, they're kind of getting distracted. Sprung just not hitting with a whole lot right now. Sprung also building up their economy, also worried a bit more about what's going to happen in the mid to late game. That's their main concern right now. Flipstep, actually a bit surprised, going just for the power and the expansion, going for the overdrive, and not going instead for additional expansions over here in this alcove over on the northwest side of the map. Now, the northeast alcove they've got, the northwest alcove they don't. A little surprising there. And air control once again being established, or at least being asserted. But the Swiss not doing a great job here, not really able to deal with this too easily. Like, they don't deal a whole lot of damage. What is the damage per shot, anyway? 7.1 damage per shot. 36 damage a second, which means it would take 
minutes to get rid of one of these Ravagers. 1850 health with 36 damage a second. That's about a minute's worth of, of continuous fire. And it's not continuous. It takes over a minute to kill one Ravager with a Swift. And even all those Swifts, it just, it just takes too long. Archangels dedicate an anti-air for Flipstip. They are really getting concerned about those rapiers, and so they should. I mean, the Hawks are doing an okay job, but it's still a lot of rapiers. Seven so far, which is a decent amount. More being constructed regularly. And Flipstip getting Hawks up. Couple Hawks up, that will help. Of course, the problem is getting those Archangels in range without losing them all. And the Ravagers, I mean, the, the Rays are kind of helping get rid of the Rapiers, but the Ravagers are the ones that really are the problem here. Like, the Ravagers and Levelers, that's what's going to cause the problems. And the Freaker trying to get as far away as it can, but it cannot jump. Actually, it could jump into the water. That is a thing it could do. But it doesn't appear to be doing so. But yeah, it could actually jump into water. Jump bots can hide in water. Flips have not taken advantage of that, however, and losing that Freaker pretty much without much cost. At this point, I would say that Sprung definitely has a lot of map superiority. Not total map control. I mean, we have a few Ravens coming up as well just to help out. But still, definitely map superiority. This is problematic, to say the least. Sprung, as we can see, expanding around the back. Oh, no, not. They aren't. They aren't actually expanding at all, really, surprisingly. Why they aren't, I don't know. That's strange. Starting to lose quite a few rapiers as well. That Archangel doing a nice job just clearing stuff out. Ravens helping out as well, but not helping out enough, unfortunately. Moderators coming up to deal with the, ra the Ravagers. But really, the Hawks and Archangels doing a wonderful job getting rid of the rapiers. I think that's, okay, two left. One left pretty shortly. The only rapier left, I think, is currently under production. Oh. There's two. One is under production, one was just built. But yeah, all the rapiers in the front lines are now dead. So Flipstep has a little bit of breathing room as a result, and a lot of reclaim around them. And they're going to need to take advantage of that, because right now, they're down by like 10 metal. But going instead for the northern expansion, trying to rebuild that. Also, re okay, so they know about the water thing. Building up some mexes in the water. Always a good idea, especially when your opponent doesn't really have a huge amount to deal with that. They have stuff, but it's hard for them to know. And the Rapiers... Yeah, at this point it looks like Flipstep's really respecting Sprung's... Or sorry, Sprung's really respecting Flipstep's Air Force. They are not building very many Rapiers. Building up some Crashers, so they definitely wanted to get rid of the Air Force in question, but they do respect it. Which does give Flipstep a fair amount of breathing room to, well, rebuild their expansions, build expansions in the water, all that stuff. Especially the water. The, the ground units cannot deal with that. And nice black hole bomb, all of... Wow, that's a lot of units just getting caught up in that black hole. About half the army just getting completely locked down there. Unfortunately, the moderator is still unable to do a lot of damage before the, ra the Ravagers get close enough to be a problem. And the Crashers, I mean, their deaths were kind of in vain. But at the same time, they did distract the moderators. And with the long reload time those moderators have, that is a problem. Still, Ravagers getting torn to shred by the Ravens, that... Not the best option. I mean, okay option. It's like, best of bad options, but still, this is really hard for Flipstip. Uh, they're under a huge amount of pressure. They have rebuilt some expansions. They have rebuilt the expansions over to the north, which is good, but their main base is under quite heavy assault. Sprung, however, looks to be not pushing that hard. I mean, they have the push going, but that's that's it. That push has actually been forced back. Flipstip with a lot of reclaim. I mean, this will be cleaned up fairly quickly. The moderators don't have much to distract them. The the Ravagers are dead. Where are the Freakers? Six Freakers. Two of them in the main... Three in the main base. One in the corner. And flips it with a crane. Nice sneaky crane there. There we go. That's what makes crane so powerful. Just sneaky to the other side of the map. Sprung has not really been expanding. Flips it has. Sprung's commander in a dangerously close position. And what is it? Oh. Oh, yeah. Dangerous indeed. 500 health. 30% of their health left. And Bomber's coming in to finish it off. Sprung losing their command. Oh. Ooh, not quite. Jump finishing it off. Now jump avoiding it entirely. Good jump there. Very good jump. Sprung jump, jumping at the right time to get... Just... To lose everything. 
to, to avoid losing everything, to get out of that bad situation. But still, at this point, Flipstep now reclaiming a bunch of stuff, now getting their economy back up on track with hidden expansions and everything. And there's not much in the way of rapiers, so not a whole lot to deal with the hidden expansions and the flying around in Flipstep. They may not have map control, but they have got a lot of sneaky stuff going on. And with the decent amount of mod rares and the mod rares and placeholders all together, that's actually doing a fair amount of damage. Sprung's still in an advantageous position. I'm not going to count them out anywhere near yet. This game has basically just become even. Like, Flipstep has basically caught up. Sprung is still in a fairly forward position in terms of map control, though. But that does mean they have to try to hold that position. Whereas Flipstep kind of went for a corner position. Hidden expansions pretty much away from where Sprung is right now. So yeah, while Sprung does have a relatively secure set of expansions in their main base and nearby areas, they don't have a lot of security over here. As they get pushed back, this area over here, and there's also a Wyvern coming in to help deal with this, but yeah, this area over here, it's going to be dealt with. And it looks like the Wyvern's looking for Sprung's commander, does find it, and goes for it. Is it going to survive to actually hit it? Yes, it does! Getting rid of Sprung's commander in one fell swoop. Nicely done, but Sprung probably doesn't care that much. You probably care as far as actually building this stuff up goes, but otherwise, not much. And that's going to leave this area open in the east. That northeast is just wide open now. Sprung expanded to the southwest to take that area they really should have taken a while ago, but well, at least they can do it now. How much reclaim is there anyway? 175 metal reclaim, not bad. Not great at this stage in the game, but still good to have, always good to have. And the Sprung trying to get a Dante to finish this off. Bit of a risky move. The moderator is going to slow it down. The placeholder is going to lock it down. A bit surprised that these moderators haven't dealt with this yet, but they are going to. And now Flips have taken a lot of map control, really turning this around. I mean, they've been kind of on the back foot most of this game, and Sprung not realizing what's going on, not realizing how much of an economy Flips have has. Flips have economy is still weaker, though. Always worth pointing out, Sprung's economy is actually stronger. But that Dante, I mean, that's a lot of, that's a really heavyweight unit. That's pushing a lot into one basket. And this is probably going to be it. It's probably going to be the battle to decide it. The moderators need to survive. If they die, that's basically it. The Wyvern coming in to get rid of one, one rapier. Well, I mean, rapiers are a pain in the butt, but honestly, there are better forces for doing that, and Flipstip has them. Still... A lot of these forces can be dealt with relatively efficiently. It's just the Dante. Once the Dante's up, the Dante is up, moves out. If it get place if it gets place held, the moderator should be able to tear it to shreds, but it will take a little while. And Sprung finally finding that expansion, those hidden expansions. Moving to deal with them, and it looks like the Wyvern is gonna what is it gonna do now? Ah, get rid of the Dante, of course. That's what it should do. Deal a good two thousand damage to it. But yeah, between placeholder and moderator, and there's... How many moderators are there? 15 moderators, each of those deals like 300... Oh, 500 damage a shot. That's about 7,500 health. They could pretty much kill the Dante in one go. Well, not quite. I mean, it would take a little bit more than that, but... Just about. The Ravens trying to do what they can, but that is not much. At all. And Sprung, they might be able to turn this around. Flipstip still has a strong economy, still has a fairly strong army. They might be able to get away with this. Sumo coming in as well for additional heavy support, I guess? I guess the vehicles would make some sense. But yeah, this is not working well. Not a lot of defenses were in place for the hidden expansions. The crane building up. This is kind of showing what I was talking about before, and maybe I was wrong. Okay, I guess this kind of... Shows why I might have been mistaken about my earlier comments about hidden expansions everywhere, because now that they've been found out, this is becoming a bit more difficult and not really defensible. And the Dante in the center of the map, where are the moderate? Did the moderators die? No, Thunderbird not even able to survive long enough to kill anything? What? And the moderators, okay, there they are, moving to get rid of the expansion destruction forces, still lost the expansions, but the bigger problem is the front of the base and Flipstep moving out of position like that. I think that was a fatal mistake. I really don't agree with that move right there. Using the Sumo to push everything back, I do agree with that move. Keep those vehicles out of the way. They're pretty fast, but keep them clumped up. If the Wolverine comes around here, and it is... I saw its shadow. And the Firewalker as well. Between the Firewalker and the Wolverine, 
these units being clumped up is going to be a big deal. It's just, deal with the clumped up units. The moderators being out of position being a problem, and the moderators basically just counterattacking, getting rid of the ravens, or sorry, the rapiers, and that's it. But they need to move, they need to continue moving. They need to keep moving. Flip step just needs to get these out of here because that's the only way they're going to be able to move forward. And the Dante just went down. Dante's down! Flipstep has all that reclaim to work with. They just have to deal with... They can get rid of these forces. That's the thing. And the Firewalker will help. A lot. But there are more forces coming in. It's continuing to move in, move in, move in. And Flipstep's counterattack being rather slow. They aren't able to pay attention to it. The fact that those forces were out of position... If Flipstep loses it, that's going to be why. Like, that'll be why. It'll because those forces were so out of position, it will have cost the game. I mean, with Sprung right inside Flipstep space, Sprung with the economic advantage they have as well, and more and more units just streaming in, if Flipstep's counterattack and deal with that, they still have a chance. They can still deal with this if they push in. They should be able to deal enough damage to at least tear this apart, or at least stop the supply lines and re reopen their base for business, but right now that's not happening. At all. I think Flipstep might be throwing in the towel because there's not much they have set up right now. Everything they want is out of position and they aren't even using it. I don't think they've... They're not paying attention to it at all. They're totally focused on their main base. Like, all their attention is on their main base. They're not focusing on counterattacks. They're, okay, now they're focusing on counterattacks. There we go. Setting up that counterattack. Little late, though. About a minute and a half late compared to what they needed to be. When that force was... When this force was over here, just sat over here, that was a minute or so ago. If they had started moving earlier, I think most of their base would have survived because they probably would have cut this area off. Like, most of these forces would have been cut off. The base would have been able to continue surviving without being torn to shreds because the reinforcements would have stopped. Or at least would have had to fall back in order to deal with the counterattack, which would have give, given Flipstep some time to rebuild. But right now, Flipstep has no main base, no factories at all. We can see very clearly no factories. And... What else is there? I mean, this is helping. This counterattack force is helping, but it's kind of getting stuck here. It's on fight move. I guess it is on fight move. Oh yeah, it was on fight move before. I mean, now the counterattack is helping out, that's for sure. And Napalm Bombers... Phoenix is coming in, trying to deal with the damage they can, and it's actually quite a lot, getting rid of most of the moderators. Raven's not able to do much, but the Phoenixes are quite handy. Caretaker for the factory rebuild, which will be Cloaky Bot. Not sure what chance Flipstep has, though. They have six metal. Their entire pace is torn to shreds. How many workers do they have? Just the one? They have two! Where's the second one? Ah. Underwater. Well, that's not a bad place to have it. Definitely hard to get to, but... The counterattack force getting torn apart very quickly. And once again, not being paid atten much attention to. Dealt some damage, but hitting the economy right now, they needed to have hit the military. Actually, they just needed to have been in position. And when that first attack happened, just being out of position like that, that... That did them in. That was it. Like, Flipstep still... They're still scrabbling. They're still trying to get what they can. And, wow. That placeholder actually caused the overshoot. Interesting. I didn't realize Napalm Bombers would overshoot because of that. But it doesn't really matter. Flipstep throws in the towel... Really, that positioning was such a big deal. I just... It's a bit of a shame that they lost because of the positioning issues. Although, admittedly, they were hit from all sides, and that was a... I mean, you could say Sprung was really smart in forcing Flipstep out of position by attacking the expansion, and then pushing it in the main base once Flipstep was out of position, because that worked beautifully. That got Flips... That got Sprung the game. Well done, Sprung. So yeah, that was that. That'll be it for me tonight. That... Hope you enjoyed that. And thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.